these exciting days, right? When somebody new comes in, a new set of eyeballs, a new thumbprint, a guy with a lot of experience, a guy that's had success, similar market, uh, was a part of orchestrating a big turnaround, making playoffs perennially, and um, even going to places we've never been before, Eastern Conference Finals and all of that. And he was introduced today, and we're thrilled because he has such a busy day that he took a few minutes for us. He's Don Waddell, the new president of Hockey Ops and general manager for your Columbus Blue Jackets. Don, welcome. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having me on the show. Outstanding. Listen, I want to talk about everything you probably can't or won't or don't have time yet to do because you haven't uncovered everything. But please, before I forget, tell me the story of being a 22-year-old kid trying to make the Miracle on Ice team because when you think about it, and clearly everyone who's seen the movie, even guys that are a lot younger, um, understand what that was about. And from what I've read, that you may have made that team had you not broken your leg early in the selection process. What do you recall from it, and how close were you, and how weird did it feel to not make it and watch what they accomplished? Well, yeah, it's a long time ago, but yes, I broke my leg initially at the uh, sports festival, came back, uh, joined the team, played uh, 15, 17 games, and then got hurt again at the in Lake Placid. Uh, right after Christmas, so and I was going to be out for the next uh, four weeks, so that broke the opportunity to uh, play for the team. But uh, as I always say, uh, the, it was a great experience. You know, you never know how things work out. If I would made a team, maybe we wouldn't have won, and we wouldn't all be talking about it. So yeah, you never know how things are going to work out. But I was very fortunate to spend time with that team and very proud of uh, those guys and what they did, and still a lot of them are very good friends of mine. Herb Brooks had a great line while well, Kurt Russell played Herb Brooks and had a great line in that movie when Craig goes up to him and say, wait a minute, you're not keeping all the best players. And Herb looks at him, the movie says, I'm not looking for the best players. I'm looking for the right ones. Um, how, what was it like being around Herb Brooks and how much did that kind of stay with you your whole life, that type of line and that type of attitude? Well, it was un- unbelievable as a leader and demand uh, that he, the respect that he got from his players. Uh, you know, the movie is pretty darn on. Uh, I'm not going to say the parts when I was there was 100%, but it was pretty good. And uh, uh, her, you know, it, it was a little different uh, situation back then, and you're dealing with all amateurs, but uh, everybody respected her. Not everybody liked her, but everybody respected her. And he got the most out of guys. And at the end of the day, they won a, a gold medal that nobody ever expected them to win. You know, Don, I know it's going to take some time for you to really settle in with everything that's going to be on, on your plate. I won't ask you specifically about Coach Vincent, but I do want to ask you specifically about the head coach position and maybe some traits that you would like a head coach to have. What do you look for from that guy? Yeah, uh, certainly he's got to uh, be able to uh, have uh, control of the locker room. Uh, you know, he's got to get uh, players on the same page. You know, not all the players uh, get treated equally because some play 20 minutes, some play 13 minutes, but they all have to be in uh, together for us to have success as a team. So you got to manage, you know, while you're coaching, you're also managing your players because of that reason. You know, you, you got different guys that have different values to the team. Doesn't mean one's more important than others, but, you know, some guys are just going to get better uh, playing time and power play, all that. So you, you, you that's number one. The players have to respect your coach. And how do you get to respect as a coach? It's how, how you how you handle uh, discipline with the players uh, and preparing the players for uh, not only training camp and the start of the season. You know, to me, uh, you got to be a good communicator and, and a listener at the same time because uh, uh, players t- today stay are different than players were 20 years ago. Players have to know where they stand. Uh, it used to be uh, back, like I say, 20, 25 years ago, the coach didn't have to communicate because the player knew where he was because of how much money is being paid. Today, that's much different because money is so big uh, with all the players. So the coach has to be able to communicate with that player and tell the player exactly what he needs out of that player to be successful. And if those communications are open, usually you have success with, uh, between that player and coach. Don, how will you assess Coach Vincent? How will you assess him not having been here? And how will, does he have a shot at fulfilling this contract in your mind? Yeah, I think everybody's got a shot. The way I look at it, uh, you know, I know him. I, I, I was watched games 
when we played them, but I will spend more time watching games. But the first thing I want to do before I do any of that is I want to meet with them. I spent three minutes with them this morning. I want to meet with them, get to know them as a person, um, you know, find out what makes them tick as a person. That That's me the most important thing. The second thing is then let me find out what kind of coach he is. And I can listen to him, talk about systems, what he thinks on power play, penalty kill, all that. But then I can watch games too to see if it all goes hand in hand. Now remember, you know, this was a tough spot last year he got put into with everything that happened. And, you know, I remember being here last game of the year and looking at how many man games you lost the injuries. Um, so, you know, last year, I mean, I know everybody going to look at the standings and all that, but, you know, it might have been different if uh, things would have happened a little bit uh, in a better way. Based off of your experience, when it comes to, you know, possibly resetting a franchise, do you put yourself in a any type of window, like a, a yearly window? What, what does that look like from your perspective when it comes to possible changes and maybe turning a new page? Well, you can't, you know, like I said, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, Mike has said, uh, you know, here's the keys, go, you know, let's let's think about that, that you're not going to make – 20 changes in, in a year. It's impossible. If, if I wanted to, I'm not saying I want to, but, you know, but I also, I'm, I'm a people person. I want to find out what makes everybody here uh, go. You know, the part that, that we won't ever stand for is uh, if we're not all on the same team, there's no eyes in this one. You know, uh, when you're working your way up, you all have to be pulling the same direction. Um, so that's number one. And then secondly is content. If you're content with where we've been the last couple of years, that's not going to work either. We, you know, we want to drive. It's going to be hard work, a lot of hours, but we all have to drive to get the best results we can from our coaches and players. And if we do that, I truly believe we can have success. He's Don Waddell, new president of Hockey Ops, GM for the CBJ here on Rothman and Ice. So you know this better than anybody. Goalies can go up and down in this league. Number one goalies aren't handed away. Do you feel like you have a true number one goalie? Uh, great question. I'll answer it this way. Uh, four years ago, I tried to trade for Alves. Um, uh, uh, this guy was, uh, I think, on a, on a course to be a uh, pure starter for sure. Um, we know uh, what happened in his personal life. But we also know that he's got three years left on a contract. And I said, it's my job to make sure we put every resource we can to see if we can get Elvis back to where he was. If we don't do that as an organization, we fail, I fail. Now, it may not work. It may work. But that's got to be our number one goal, to put all the... uh, all the uh, uh, time and energy into that uh, uh, to try to make sure uh, that we do our job on that part. And then, um, you know, we have a couple of young guys there that are, uh, are uh, you know, knocking on the door. Obviously, some injuries last year uh, with um, um, at the end of the year there hurt some guys. Uh, the um, – I was wondering if I can uh, – uh, a terror song, yeah. Uh, I think he ended up playing uh, 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 well when he was playing, but the injuries there. And then I think they brought up uh, the kid at the end of the year. I think he played against us, uh, uh, Greece. Yep, Jack uh, Reeves. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, again, those guys. Uh, uh, so the potential, we have some guys there. You know, we just have to, you know, uh, figure out you know, how we're going to get them back to where they were. And if we don't, then we have to go and find the next guy. But, uh, uh, you know, you look at, uh, you know, some of the numbers, you know, on, uh, uh, you know, when you look at, uh, uh, you know, Tarasov, uh, you know, his numbers are pretty good when he's playing. He's just, you know, he's had some injuries and went down to Cleveland a little bit there and, so there, there is some potential. It's not, it's not like I'm not saying that it comes July first. We have to add a goal there. We have to work hard between now and then to make sure that we do everything we can as an organization and put us in a good spot. You, you mentioned Cleveland in there. I'm always interested in the philosophy of a general manager or coach when it comes to young guys gaining experience. Are you in the camp of guys need to play at this level to gain experience, or are you more in the mindset of, hey, sending a guy down maybe can make them more comfortable and they can gain some traction there? 
100 percent the second i think there's very few players that are ready to step in the national hockey league as an 18 19 year old kid um i think most of the time you're you're if you look at some very successful franchises over the years they always were more patient with their young players now saying that they had some good older players where they could be but that's what we got to get to is we got to develop our players there's a cap system you can't just go out and buy players you know you're going to pay some your better players a lot of money so you're going to need entry-level players and if you're going to be good those entry-level players have to be players that you work through your drafted work through your system and now ready to play in the nhl so my belief is unless you're a special fantilly you know those kind of players you're better off playing in the American League, getting that experience, and that way when you come to the NHL, you're ready to play NHL hockey, not just a guy trying to hang on and survive. Don, I know you uh, said you want to get to know people as people, right? And you haven't had a chance to do that yet, so I understand. But I would ask you when you come in and assess a roster, just from a theory standpoint, do you view anyone on the roster as unmovable, or do you treat this whole thing as a blank slate? I want to assess it. Where do you stand on that? Yeah, well, obviously there's players, and, and, and I don't know all of them, that have uh, no move contracts. I, I, I've looked at them, of course, but I, there's players that have that. So it would be unfair for me to talk about any one player because uh, uh, I think the assessment has to be made uh, you know, through, uh, uh, through our group here. Uh, you know, I want to hear what everybody here thinks about these players before I give my because a lot of times I've been in situations if I give my opinion about a player there's some people that are going to just want to agree with me which is wrong um, I like if somebody thinks totally different they got to disagree and tell me why and they could be right or I could be right you know nobody holds the uh, uh, the magic bull as far as n- knowing for sure somebody's got to make that final decision but I think the biggest thing is I want to hear everybody here talk about each individual player we're going to go in depth on every player and then uh, that'll help me assess what our staff thinks about them and of course I'm going to have my own opinions on the players I'm sure you've been told if success comes to this franchise with you helping to orchestrate that um, they might build you a statue my man it's that kind of a place it's that kind of a fan base to that kind of a city. So we wish you a lot of good luck. I know you've been on a treadmill today, and you spent a few minutes with us. So thank you. We look forward to a little relaxed session maybe later this summer. Thanks, Don.